crowd. It's a lot of people in the crowd. It is. We believe survivors! 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 We believe survivors!
my name is Liv Kleinberg. Um, I'm actually a student here in DC. I'm not from here, but all the solidarity that I see out there today gives me a lot of hope. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, um, my name is Liv Kleinberg. I'm a student at American University. And I'm, not from here. I'm not from here. I'm I'm from New York City. And I know it's scary, and I know it's traumatizing, and I know it's difficult. But we're all out here, and we're all sharing our stories, and it's bringing us together. And whether or not, whether or not Kavanaugh gets in, we're still together, and that doesn't mean we're done fighting. <laughs> While I've been out here protesting, I've seen and I've met a lot of people from older generations saying that they've been protesting this since the 60s and it hasn't changed the 60s this hasn't changed since the 60s it's the same from anita hill to now dr blazy ford nothing has changed there need to be constructive policies to make sure that this never happens again and that there's never any sexual predators in office or in power Hell yeah!
Gardner. Boo, Corey Gardner. Yesterday, a group of 10 survivors from the state of Colorado tried twice to meet with Corey Gardner, and both times we were not listened to.
If I'd screamed louder, if I'd pushed back harder, maybe I could have done something to stop it. I came here last night in the spur of the moment from New York. It was a five hour train ride of travel and it blew my last several paychecks and most of my weekend, which I desperately needed for homework. But I have something more important to do. This is history and this is helping other women. This is giving a voice to those who could not speak today because they couldn't afford to come, because they were too afraid of victims to come, or because they are one of the thousands of women every year who have been killed for saying no and no longer have any voice at all. I come today because I can never change what happened to me, and maybe I can't change the outcome of this vote either. But the trauma of what happened to me is more than enough. And the last thing I need is yet another thing to regret. Another instance of wondering if I had said no a little bit louder, if I had fought back a little harder, maybe something could have been different. I don't know if we can make a difference, but today we are here together and that is what is important. And maybe today we won't win, maybe we will, but there are other battles in the future that we can. I want every survivor here to know it is never your fault, no matter what. And maybe today feels like another instance of your voice being ripped from your throat and your mouth covered. But I hear you. Someone hears you. And I believe you. I believe survivors. And I believe in survivors. I believe in our resilience. And our power. And in our ability to change the world. Too late. 
and he was already dead. I'm living in Colorado now, and Cory Gardner is my senator, and he is voting for Kavanaugh. Shame! 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 sexually assaulted her some 36 years ago. Facing several senators and an entire nation, she uttered the words, I am here today, not because I want to be, but because I am terrified. She courageously testified to the event she could remember, the layout of the house, the floor plan of the room, the bed where it was located, how she was ambushed in the bathroom, her outfit, and the grip she lops. You got this. You got this. of the boys that pinned her down to the bed. She even spoke about how 
norepinephrine and epiphrine encodes the hippocampus, AKA, she knew the facts. <laughs> she was more than a credible witness, and to say that would diminish the impact of what she's done. Speak right Speak to the mic. She's a hero to anyone that has been a victim of sexual assault. Yes. A pillar of light in our community, a beacon of hope, and an example of how to come forward courageously to speak your truth, the truth. She took the oath and swore to tell the truth, and she did it and illuminated this country. It's sickening to believe that this man could be appointed, but I'd be remiss if I say I wasn't surprised because clearly one Supreme Court justice and a president are already weren't enough. So rather than make today about those men or sit here and thank Jeff Flake for making a decision that should have never been an option, I want to thank the survivors for coming today, regardless of the fact that your country doesn't support you. And for the allies here today and the people supporting these women, thank you. Hi, my name is Suzanne, and I'm here because, yes, everything that you guys have said made me mad. Other way? Which way? Louder. I got it. Yes. No. Everything that we've seen in the past few days, the past few weeks, has made me mad. But what really, really made me mad was that guy getting up there and saying he did not have any connections. I did not have grandparents who went to Yale College. My grandparents grew up in a mining town in West Virginia. An FDR program got them out to Buffalo, where there were jobs in the 50s. I got into Yale Law School because I had connections. You all are my connections. Yes, as a college student, I drank. And I was part of that horrible 80s party culture. But I woke up. And I volunteered at a rape crisis center. And I got into Yale Law School. You guys were my connections. You women, you strong women like the woman from West Virginia who has come here to say that Joe Manchin is a traitor. You people who have come here to help others and to stand up for your rights. You men who have come here and admitted you're not perfect. All of us, together, that's what counts. And the measure of success is not whether you get into a particular law school. It's not whether you deserve a seat on the Supreme Court. It's whether you recognize your privilege and want to extend it to others.
pay attention to my sign and I want to speak directly to my white sisters. This mess is on us. 53% of us voted for Pussy Grabber in Chief. He was the preferred candidate of every group of white women except for millennial white women. We have to unite with our sisters of color. From time memorial, women, women of color have pleaded with us to recognize their humanity and to unite with them and to see that the patriarchy does not serve us. White women do not be servile anymore to the patriarchy. We saw that yesterday with Susan Collins, with Cindy Hyde-Smith, and with Senator Caputo behind her. There's a reason why they were all three together in that scene. And I want to say to all the women in our country, when we unite, we make up 50%. When we add in men of color, then we are the majority, and there's nothing that can stop us. And that is exactly why white men have always tried to, to convince white women to unite with them and to be on their side and to oppress our sisters of color. This ends today. and my boyfriend raped me, I didn't think I could tell my parents. So when I was 19 and I was raped at gunpoint and blindfolded, I decided that if it ever happened again, I would report. So when I was 29 and I was raped by somebody that I knew, I went to the police and I reported him and he confessed on tape and I went with the police to help pinpoint him when he was arrested. He never spent a night in jail. Boo. Boo. I lost my job. I lost all of my friends. Even the women in my social circle came at me via social media 
and attacked me. This was 10 years ago. And I thought that even now, with the Me Too movement, things might have changed. But our representatives in the Senate GOP, the women representatives in the Senate GOP, stood up yesterday and proved to us that they still don't think that women's lives and women's bodies are worth protecting. And that is why I am here today. Yes. Yes. Because women's lives and women's bodies and women's souls matter. I am 40 years old and I still hurt. And every day, especially over the past two weeks, I have been sobbing and my soul still is broken. And every one of us who is a survivor knows exactly what I am talking about. And everyone who has never gone through this does not and cannot understand. We need better. We deserve better. And our Congress is here to support citizens, not rich, elite, frat boys who think that they are entitled to a seat on the Supreme County, Maryland. I'm here today because we need to make sure that our spineless politicians understand that we will be at the ballot box on November 6th. I wanted to emphasize that we are what's different. We are a new and unsettling force in American politics. And with morality 
on our side with justice, we will rise from this moral political darkness. Thank you. Physical 
social, economic, and emotional privilege that so many humans do not. I can decide at 9.45 a.m. that I need to be on a plane, and I have all the necessary resources to make that happen. I have job security and control of my schedule. I have money to pay for it. I have a husband who responds to my declaration that I might need to do this with. Whatever you need, I will help you. There was, there was not a single hurdle in my path trying to trip me up. I have no asshole boss who can control my life. I don't have to choose between a plane ticket and feeding my family. I don't have to fight for my right to exist in my own house. So I thought, if I'm not using my hurdle-free path to clear the way for the people behind me, what the fuck am I doing with my life? <laughs> Having privilege means you can easily perform a task that would be harmful or difficult to others. and speak. <laughs> Woo! 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 Having privilege means you can easily perform a task that would be harmful or difficult to others. This is a universal truth that spans many subjects. There are men in this world who would either harm me or simply disregard my words if I tried to speak to them. So men who are less likely to be harmed and more likely to be listened to should speak for me. I have very little to fear from police officers and our justice system in general. They're not gonna draw their guns on me or beat the crap out of me for no reason. That is a legitimate fear for so many other humans. So if someone needs to speak to the police, I will step forward. When your ingrained shield is bigger than other people's, you should stand in front of them. Thank you. You know the winds are changing when we have all these incredible white women of privilege speaking about how they're going to use their privilege to help their disprivileged women. So shout out to you all. Thank you. I'm really nervous. I'm a DC student. I'm a DC student. I was 13 years old. I was sexually assaulted in the hallways of my school. And like so many other girls, this continues to happen. And people watched it happen. Boys and girls made fun of me, and that is not okay. We need to look back in the past and heal those people that have gone through so much, but we also need to look into the future because boys and men will not change if we have people like Kavanaugh and Trump and other white privileged men in our government. We need to vote no. Thank you, my heart is literally burning with fury and we need to vote no. You're amazing. you and not get shut down. <laughs> Would anyone else like to come up? Please do. Both of you. Yes, anyone who wants to come up. We are no organizers. We're literally just demonstrators with a megaphone. So you are more than welcome. This is your rally as much as it is ours. Hi, my name is Ali. I'm a student at American University. <laughs> I would like to say. Speak right into the mic, right up. Women aren't just daughters, sisters, and mothers. We are humans. <laughs> Why? Why does that have to be reminded? Also, since when was boys will be boys a valid excuse? What kind of bullshit is that? Yeah. <laughs> and as my queen Janelle Monet says, this pussy grabs back! My name is Sarah Salisbury, and George Soros did not make my sign. I made it on the bus this morning. I took the red eye here last night from, a, from uh, Northern California.
so many of our brothers here today, um, these beautiful woke men. I just want to give a shout out to you because I know it takes a lot of courage to come out in the midst of and just be here with us as our allies in the midst of all of our, our female rage. We know you've got our backs and we love you. Thank you so much. And I also just want to say that I, I really debated coming because I'm just one person, but I feel like the GOP right now is a massive infection at the heart of our country. Woo! And each yeah. one of us is a tiny but powerful white blood cell. And yeah. Yeah. every single person here today is making a difference. We're all fighting that infection. It matters that each of us are here. I really believe that. And I'm so grateful to be with a bunch of other pissed off people. Yeah. <laughs> 
Hi, my name is Catherine, and I, like all of my Northern California sisters, decided Thursday night that I absolutely had to be here, that this was my civic duty, the same as it was for Dr. Ford. And thank goodness for an amazing husband and amazing friends and being um, self-employed and all of the privileges that I had, I was able to get on a plane and be here with you all today. <laughs> One of the other privileges I have is that I have not been assaulted. And I can't imagine how hard these last two weeks have been for those of you who have. Friends who haven't been able to get out of bed, to function in this world. And so I'm gonna use my privilege today to tell one of those stories. A friend of mine who is still silent and really wants to have all of the catharsis of the Me Too movement, but still can't share her story. To give answer to the question of why didn't she say something? Why are we only hearing about this 36 years later? Here's why. These accusations are from years ago. Why didn't she say anything before now? I can't speak for other victims, but I can tell you why, even now, I'm afraid to come forward. My uncle abused me starting the summer before I entered second grade. The abuse continued for nearly 10 years. I didn't tell anyone the first time it happened because he told me not to. He said it would be our little secret. Cliche, I know. I've kept our little secret for nearly 40 years. For a long time, I felt complicit. I didn't tell, therefore it was my fault. As an adult, I understand that isn't true. I was a child, it couldn't have been my fault. Now I have different concerns. My abuser has a wife and three kids. They are, I presume, ignorant of his actions. If I were to finally admit what he did to me all of those years, I fear the effect that my disclosure would have on their lives. Can you imagine learning that your father or your husband had sexually abused his niece? I can't do that to them. The shockwave wouldn't stop there. My parents believe they did a decent job keeping their children safe. They would learn that they literally paid my abuser to babysit me. I'm protecting my parents from that realization. Finally, I'm protecting myself. I see how victims are treated. I have seen children as young as 11 years old described as a little promiscuous. I am 100% certain that I would not be believed and that my motives would be questioned. For me, that's a cruel irony. I've kept a shameful secret for four decades and if I were to finally come out, I'd be accused of seeking attention. The last thing I want is that kind of attention. I believe that I am resilient and that I have gotten over what happened to me so many years ago. I have a wonderful life with a supportive husband and an excellent therapist. I'm okay, except even now not a day goes by that I don't think about what happened. Especially now, this was a long time ago, with sexual assault in the news and an admitted abuser in the White House, my abuse is always top of mind. I think I'm okay. Except there was the time I was called for jury duty. I was placed on a panel for a childhood sexual assault case. As I waited my turn to be questioned, I practiced my speech. I was sexually abused by my uncle, so I don't think I can be impartial. I was fine all day until it was my turn on the stand. I calmly answered all of the questions put to me until they asked if I, or anyone I knew, had ever been sexually assaulted. My throat closed up. I literally could not speak. I tried to answer and I tried to fight back the tears, but it was useless. The bailiff helped me off the stand, got me some tissues, and pointed me to the exit. It troubles me that I couldn't speak then. I'm frustrated that I can't speak now. I cannot come out, I cannot tell my story, and I'm not alone. Even now, even after this victory, of me too being the people on the, people of the year in the magazine last year, have so, uh, so many people, men and women, have so many reasons why we do not feel safe enough to come forward. Please remember us today. Remember that this work is not done. Remember that if you don't know anyone in your family who has been assaulted, it most likely means that someone is protecting you from the truth. 
We hope that others who are still silent, and let's get the hashtag still silent going, can find allies to help them safely share their truths. That was written last November. Now I have to add one more piece. How can women not be able to serve on juries because they would be biased as survivors of assault while we let assaulters sit on the Supreme Court? Fuck 
like that. Yeah. Look, if you are if you are standing here in privilege, you must use that. I'm I'm not oblivious to that. But your privilege does not make that pain less real. Um, if we're being honest, I I don't know if I believe that for myself. So I'm just gonna um I'm gonna say it for everyone here. Uh, I believe you.
fleeing for their lives, saving their families and children, whether they are crossing from Syria to Turkey, Burma to Bangladesh, or Mexico to the U.S. These refugees are heroes and should be welcomed by all people of conscience. I'm here in solidarity with poor and working class women who are sexually harassed and abused at the workplace by bosses and management who couldn't care less about them, who coerced them into silence. I'm here in solidarity with men and boys who are told they are not allowed to cry or show emotion. I believe survivors. All survivors. And I stand firmly with them. I stand with the people in direct uh, opposition to the unelected, undemocratic, and backward Supreme Court. In opposition to the unelected government with a rapist as president. We are unstoppable. 